Animals have inspired humans to do some crazy things. Our admiration of birds led us to pursue flight. Our curiosity about deep sea life spurred our love for diving. Our longing to eat as much as a pig led to the all-you-can-eat buffet. Still, there are some amazing animal abilities I don't think we'll ever catch up to. From bullet-punching shrimp to zombie toads, these are some of the world's most amazing animals. Slow burn. How well do you handle the heat? I'm pretty good at it. After all, I spend most of my time in the BMA's server farms, and boy, do they get hot. But even I can't compete with this deep sea critter, which kind of resembles your garden variety snail. I say kind of because from other angles, it just looks like a blob. Either way, the scaly-footed gastropod, or volcano snail, lives in the deepest depths of the Indian Ocean. Up to one and a half miles, in fact. That's as deep as three Burj Khalifas, the tallest building in the world, straight down. For roughly every 32 feet below the surface of the ocean you dive, the atmospheric pressure increases by one. That means that at 1.5 miles down, you'd be experiencing around 241 atmospheres of pressure. Try to imagine the feeling of an elephant standing on your toe, but all over your body. Ouch. But if that still sounds too leisurely for you, consider the fact this aptly named snail also makes its home in volcanic vents. These vents can reach up to 750 degrees Fahrenheit, which is three times hotter than the boiling point of water, and hotter than the open flames produced by some torches. That means that the volcanic snail is living in an environment that would crush, roast, and boil most other animals. So, how does the wonder blob survive such a cruel treatment? Well, it's metal. And I uh, don't mean that in the hardcore sense. Except it also is. This creature's shell is made of iron sulfide, meaning it's literally part metal. Marine biologists have found that the snail's metal tolerance protein gene is 27 times higher than other similar species, which explains its ability to transform itself into a tiny living tank. Rather than eating, the scaly-footed gastropod has a large gland that absorbs bacteria and iron from its surroundings, keeping it tough as nails. Despite its amazing resilience, however, they face extinction due to the deep-sea mining operations interfering with their habitat. Well, they can always join me here at the server farm if they need a place to stay. The Puff Grounds Everybody loves pufferfish. These cute, brightly colored fish can be found in tropical and subtropical waters around the world, and are a favorite sight among divers. As you can probably tell from their pudgy exterior, these little fish are pretty defenseless, and their bright coloration makes them easy to spot. When agitated, however, they're able to inflate their bodies with water and expand up to three times their original size. If this doesn't scare predators away, many species, like the deadly fugu, are also highly poisonous. While interesting aspects of the creature Neither of those quirks are what make the pufferfish truly amazing, however. That's the fact that the humble pufferfish makes art, and pretty breathtaking art at that. As recently as 1995, it was discovered that the much-loved pufferfish has one of the most curious mating rituals in the animal kingdom. When a male pufferfish wants to attract a mate, they look for a relatively undisturbed patch of the ocean floor. Then, using their fins and bodies, they will slowly start to create symmetrical grooves and patterns in the sand. As time goes on, this pattern spirals out, forming a kind of deep-sea crop circle. After the main foundations have been worn in, the pufferfish will then begin to add stones and pebbles to the circle, as a kind of deep-sea decoration. Completing a circle like this takes time, and the poor pufferfish must work 24 hours a day for an entire week to get it done. And you thought online dating was rough. 
The fish needs to put in these intense hours as even a minor shift in the sand could result in damage to the circle's structural integrity. While it isn't known what makes a circle good or bad to a ladyfish, it's assumed that the size and symmetry play a role. And uh, I tried taking a page out of the pufferfish playbook. Unfortunately, I'm on day three so far, and the circle of garbage cans around my house has yet to attract a fitting mate. Life is Ogre Over the years, I've been called a lot of creative insults in the comments down there. An annoying orb, an internet loser, king of the shut-ins. But even I've never been called something as cruel as the poor ogre-faced spider. Can it really be so bad? Ah, it is. Get it off the screen. This creepy crawly can be found all across the forests of Africa and Australia. If its peepers are freaking you out, there's a reason. The ogre-faced spider has the largest eyes of any spider in the world, and they're extremely perceptive to light, able to absorb 15,000 times more photons than ours. Additionally, despite lacking ears, they're able to hear their surroundings through thin hairs on their legs. What do they use their hyperperception for? Well, you'll be sorry you asked. Like many of its relatives, the ogre-faced spider spins a web out of silk it produces from an organ called a spinneret. The ogre-faced spider doesn't kick back and wait for something to get stuck after spinning its web. However, it does something altogether more horrifying. Instead, the ogre-faced spider creates a second, smaller web, which it holds between its forelegs. Wielding this smaller web, the spider will then dangle from the first web suspended in the air. At this point, the spider does something sinister. It places some bait beneath it. Poopy bait. That's right, this spider has evolved so that its own excrement smells like delicious food to its prey. When an unsuspecting insect passes underneath, the ogre-faced spider falls on top of it, using the smaller web as a net. It traps the poor wriggling creature underneath this web, which then fuses to its skin, making escape a futile impossibility. At this point, the ogre spider injects an acidic venom into its prey, which melts their insides. The mastermind then slurps up their poor defenseless victim. As if that weren't a horrifying way to die in the first place, Imagine knowing you were there because you'd been tricked by poop. The Amazing Brain Tongue Have you ever been so annoyed at something you felt like slamming your head against a wall? Well, that's nothing special. Woodpeckers do that thousands of times a day. Woodpeckers are small, colorful birds that can be found all over the world, and are best known for being the jackhammers of the animal kingdom spending their days vigorously pecking holes into trees. They do this in order to carve out nests for themselves, as well as devour any bugs they may find beneath the tree bark. If this sounds laborious, well, you're clearly not a woodpecker. These incredible birds are able to strike a tree with their beak up to 20 times a second. That's more than even the most hardcore headbanger at a metal concert. Despite typically weighing less than 15 ounces, a woodpecker can carve a perfectly round nest big enough to accommodate them in just a few days. A woodpecker's skull redistributes the impact of this hammering through their entire body, so they never end up with a splitting headache. After pecking these holes, the woodpecker will extend its tongue into the tree, slurping up any delicious bugs it finds inside. It's able to do this because a woodpecker's tongue is typically twice the length of its bill, giving it some serious ranged French kissing abilities. Fully extended, this tongue can stretch up to 5 inches from its bill. Now, you may look at this tiny creature in front of you and wonder where all the tongue comes from. Well, this incredibly long tongue actually curls up inside the skull. A woodpecker's tongue doesn't continue down the throat like most animals, but actually wraps up and backwards between the skull and the back of the head. Being such a prolific species, there are dozens of woodpeckers with their own unique quirks. The acorn woodpeckers, for instance, 
create what are called granary trees. These are dried old trees they peck holes into, into which they can store thousands of acorns. They return to these trees during the winter to enjoy their acorn stockpile. Think of it like turning an old dead tree into your own personal vending machine. I'm glad woodpeckers are remembered for these fun facts and not that horrifying Woody Woodpecker movie. Watusi Cutie Here are my three tips for beating the heat this summer. Wear breezy clothes, drink plenty of cool liquids, and grow enormous eight-foot-long horns. Don't believe me? Well, let's learn about the Watusi. The Watusi is a breed of cattle that traces its lineage all the way back to ancient Egypt, with their ancestors depicted in ancient hieroglyphs. These hefty heifers have been known to stand as tall as six feet at the shoulder and weigh around 1,600 pounds, as much as 15 beer kegs. A considerable amount of that weight comes from their enormous horns, which are some of the largest in the animal kingdom. These intimidating weapons can measure in at a staggering eight feet in length with a 30-inch circumference. While that may be huge, it's nothing compared to the largest Watusi horns ever measured. This is C.T. Woody, who in 2004 entered the Guinness Book of World Records for the animal with the largest horns. C.T. Woody's perilous pokers measured in at 40 inches in circumference. Imagine if you were walking around with arms that were each four feet long and thicker than basketballs for an idea of what old Woody was dealing with. Now, funnily enough, a Watusi's horns have no fixed shape, and every cow's is different. This is why some curve around while others just jut out. Additionally, Watusi horns never stop growing. This means size is often a good indicator of how old the Watusi is. Despite their enormous size and large, horny payload, the Watusi doesn't exactly have to eat much to survive. It's thought that this trait, along with their horn's secret feature, make the Watusi particularly suited for harsh African summers. What is that secret? Well, a Watusi's horns are air conditioners. A Watusi is able to channel its body temperature through its horns, which then radiates outwards as a kind of heat expulsion system. It can do this because, unlike many other animals, a Watusi's horns actually have blood vessels inside them, which are able to transport heat throughout the body. Wow, that's certainly more efficient than the electric fan hat I built last summer. My head still has burn marks. Well, Maybe portable AC isn't your scene, and you'd be more interested in spinning danger nets. Which of these crazy animal abilities would you most like to have? Let me know down in the comments, and make sure to like and subscribe for more amazing content. Now, what have we got next? The Flatliner A flatfish swims into a bar. The bartender asks, Hey, why the flat face? Uh, sorry, that joke fell flat. My comedy skills are looking a bit, uh, thin right now. <clears throat> anyway, this is the flatfish, and it's one weird customer. There are 822 known species of this prolific fish, and they can be found in freshwater and oceans around the world. While they're often called flounders, this isn't entirely correct. All flounders are flatfish, but not all flatfish are flounders. Now that lesson in marine etymology is out of the way, let's discuss some weird fish. As the name suggests, the flatfish is an incredibly thin and flat fish, almost resembling a swimming pancake. This shape allows them to press themselves flat against the ocean floor, and their sandy colors help them blend in. But some flatfish also bury themselves slightly allowing them to easily hide themselves from predators. This ability is also great for sneakily hunting prey, the very ocean floor rising up to snarf them down when they least expect it. Though they may not look like they're built for speed, they're actually incredibly agile swimmers. Using a fin on the underside of its body, a flatfish is able to launch itself like a catapult. 
At the same time, the fish expels a sudden burst of water downward, meaning it's able to pounce underwater. Seeing as they spend so much of their time pressed against the ocean floor, both of the flatfish's eyes are located on the top of its head, giving it a full view of its overhead surroundings. And also a pretty silly expression. Strangely, however, most flatfish aren't born this way. They resemble regular fish in their infancy and slowly develop their shape. This is most notable in the face because their eyes migrate across their skull over the course of several weeks, eventually meeting each other at the top. And to think, my ex-wife said I had a wandering eye. Back to life. Throughout history, man has been obsessed with the idea of coming back from the dead. In pursuit of the secrets of eternal life, some have looked to science while others have pursued the dark arts. Turns out the answer was this guy. The Eastern Spadefoot Toad is a small North American toad, typically found east of the Mississippi River. It takes its name from a small black spike it has on its hind legs. This spike is made of keratin, the same protein that makes up our fingernails and hair. Using this spike, or spade, the toad is able to burrow its way into the ground bass backwards. What many don't realize, however, is that when it does this, the spadefoot toad is actually digging its own grave. This is because the spadefoot toad practices an extreme form of bromation, which is like hibernation for cold-blooded animals. Upon burying itself, the spadefoot toad compacts itself into a tight ball and excretes a fluid from its body. This fluid hardens into a shell, and the process almost completely dehydrates the toad. The toad then enters a kind of stasis where its biological processes slow down until they're on the edge of stopping entirely. During the months it spends underground, the toad is in a death-like state, motionless, cocooned, and essentially lifeless. However, something amazing happens during the monsoon season. As the rain falls and moisture seeps into the ground, the toad's chamber softens and moisture seeps into its skin. This allows the toad to breathe again and wakes it up from its pseudo-death. This is why many have nicknamed this remarkable creature the zombie toad. After reawakening, the spadefoot toad emerges from the ground to mate. And while the whole coming back from the dead thing may be their most interesting trait, I would really be remiss if I didn't let you hear their absolutely absurd mating call. Seriously, they sound like someone sarcastically imitating a toad. After mating, the spadefoot toads will bury themselves back in the ground, returning to their long dream of death. Man, it's a good thing these toads aren't kept as pets. Can you imagine how uncomfortable it would be explaining to little Timmy their beloved toad had died, only for it to come back to life a week later? One Punch Shrimp This is the Mantis Shrimp. Doesn't look like much, does it? Well, stay tuned. In two minutes, I'll have you tearing down your Iron Man posters and putting up a Mantis Shrimp poster in its place because this thing is hardcore. Let's start with the basics. The mantis shrimp is a brightly colored crustacean that can be found in shallow tropical water. It has eight pairs of legs, three for walking, and five for feeding, which presumably makes it a fiend at all-you-can-eat buffets. It has two pairs of sensitive antennae, five gills for breathing, and apparently tastes great fried with garlic butter. Their most noticeable trait, however, has got to be their big, giant eyes. These ginormous bulbs are able to rotate and move independently of one another, giving the little shrimp a tremendous range of sight. And these eyes hold an even crazier secret, though. They're some of the most powerful in the animal kingdom. For perspective, dogs have two color cones in their eyes, while humans have three. 
This means every color we see is some combination of what our red, green, and blue cones can perceive. A mantis shrimp, on the other hand, has 12. This means the mantis shrimp can see four times as many colors as we can, colors we are literally unable to see. This even includes light on the ultraviolet and infrared spectrums. And this is useful in hunting down tiny or camouflaged prey, because when your eyes are that sensitive, there's nowhere to hide. And if a mantis shrimp catches you, it's over. This is because the mantis shrimp has one of the most brutal weapons in the animal kingdom, the rocket punch. It has two arms designed to shoot forward at breakneck speeds in order to punch the brains out of its prey. Despite being only six inches long, it's estimated the mantis shrimp punch has the relative power of a 22 caliber bullet. This punch is so fast it boils the water around it and has been known to crack glass. Yeah, remember how I compared this thing to Iron Man? I think it's actually more like the Deep Sea Terminator. Frog Drone If you've ever worked or lived in a tall building, chances are you've gotten irritated waiting for an elevator. Wouldn't it be so much easier if you could just open a window and glide down? Well, meet the Malabar Gliding Frog, who at some point in history must have had the same idea. Except they committed to it. This friendly-looking frog can be found living in the trees among the ghats of western India. As you can see here, this amphibian's toes are prominently webbed, even more so than other frogs. This thick webbing allows the frog to leap from high trees and glide down gracefully. In the right conditions, the frog is able to glide 115 times its own body length which, for reference, would be like Batman gliding twice the length of a football field. And these green gliders have been spotted in trees at heights of up to 115 feet, so they're quite the little adventurers. They developed this ability so that they could live up high in the trees, and more easily hide their eggs from predators. This also gives their jump a little extra lift, which, as you can see here, really helps them bolt away from danger. Now, that's not the only surprise this frog has in store, though, because the Malabar gliding frog is able to produce a frothy, foam-like substance from its body. The frogs lay their eggs in this foam, and then cover it up with twigs and leaves, further hiding away their precious eggs. During the mating season, when they're looking for that special someone who gets their foam frothing, the Malabar gliding frog can be recognized by its unique call. Kind of sounds like the predator, doesn't it? Except the predator can't glide. I'd put my money on the frog. Platy what? When you hear the word alien, what images does your mind conjure up? Bulging eyes, masses of tentacles, throbbing brains? Well, I'm here to tell you that real aliens actually look like this. That's because the Palatopus is, without a doubt, one of the most unique and strange animals on Earth. It seems every decade we learn something new and freaky about these little weirdos. But let's start at the very beginning, shall we? A couple of weeks after being laid, a baby Palatopus will hatch out of an egg. Now, right away, this is strange, as the Palatopus is a mammal. Mammals come in three flavors. Eutherians, which include animals like humans and canines, marsupials, which include animals like wombats and kangaroos, and monotremes, which are mammals that lay eggs. Monotremes only include palatopuses and echidnas. Every single other mammal is either a marsupial or eutherian. That's how unique they are. While I don't want to annoy Knuckles, being a monotreme is really the only interesting thing about echidnas, so let's move on. The platypus is in an exclusive club, Big Whoop. Well, here's another fact. They're psychic. You know, kind of. Platypuses have a sixth sense, in addition to the five we have, called electroreception. You see, all living matter gives off a very slight electrical field. 
It's why we're able to get static shocks from friction. Well, the platypus can close its eyelids and ear lids, which is an extra weird thing they have, and see the world through its electricity. Interestingly, a panicked creature's electric field is more easily detectable. This is why even in dark or brackish water, a platypus can hunt fish easily. You can hide or hold still, but you can't turn off your electric field. And as if that wasn't cool enough, as recently as 2020, it was discovered that platypuses actually glow under UV lights, which illuminate their entire fur either white, green, or blue. It's theorized that the platypus may be able to see light in this spectrum, and thus be able to identify other platypuses in the dark. See? I meant it when I said we discover something new about them every decade. Oh, and before I forget, they're also venomous, producing a noxious toxin from spikes on their hind legs during their mating season. You won't be surprised to hear they're also one of the only mammals that can do that. Honestly, these guys are so weird. I wouldn't be surprised if, when the aliens finally do descend on our little blue world, a bunch of familiar duck-billed faces step out of that saucer. Those were some truly amazing critters and venerable varmints. Do you know any amazing animals I may have missed? Let me know your favorites down in the comments, and until next time, thanks for watching.